Hi, and welcome to our first Zoom meeting for the town of North Topsail Beach. We're getting ready to call to order the Board of Aldermen special meeting for Friday, April 24th. And we've got quite an agenda here. So I'm gonna call us to order and ask for approval of the agenda. Okay, I make a motion that we approve the agenda with the removal of item 3F, suggested rules of procedure. Mm -hmm. It's a recommendation that we, we move those to the board retreat. I'll second. Discussion? Um, uh, actually, we should move those to our next regular meeting rather than waiting on the retreat in May because the suggested rules are the rules that we follow for our parliamentary procedure and so forth. So we really do need to um, review those before we have the uh, retreat. The other amendment I'd like to make to the agenda is to remove the closed station. Unless someone else has an item for the closed session, I'd like to remove that closed session because I'm not sure with our technology how close that station might really be. So the item that I had can wait for a later date. We had talked about the closed session being done um, via conference call, like outside of the Zoom meeting. So that's really up to you. That was your item, if you'd like to remove that or want to keep it. We had talked about exiting the Zoom meeting for the closed session and doing that via conference call since we have one remote participant. Um, so that's really up to you whether you want, to, if you want to still keep that or remove it, what do you want to recommend? Now we'll remove it. Okay. Before we vote, I want to go back to the suggested rules of procedure item. I, I would request that, Mike, since it appears that the changes that potentially will be made are changes that you desire, that the board be afforded the suggested changes in, in a fashion and a timeline that we can review them uh, in detail before we are expected to act upon those. It was, it was, it was not, not my intent to make any changes, changes to the suggested yeah. rules. I was just uh, providing that information to some of the board members. And uh, I think that this is the, um, the appropriate situation normally would be for the mayor to approve and revise rules, make any changes that the mayor thinks we should use for this term. And the board would review those rules and we would adopt them after discussion. So I, I never made any changes to the uh, to the rules. Okay. I was just a conduit to pass this information on to some of the board. Okay. And I do believe that there are some new rules that have come out recently and Laura was going to review what we've currently got versus the new rules that were released. So she'd be able to provide those to the board to review uh, prior to um, either the retreat or the next meeting. I think we need to understand what timeline that's going to be because if our first meeting is going to be the first week in May, that's is that next week. Week after it's two weeks. Okay. As long as we have enough time, I think to read it, it's a 25 page document. Okay, so we're back to a, approval of the agenda minus uh, item 3F and minus uh, item 6, closed session. And I'll make a motion that we approve the agenda with those changes. Second. Clark, could you call roll? Alderman Hyde? Yes. Alderman Minor? Aye. Alderman Vincent? Aye. 
Alderman Peters. Aye. Aye. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the town attorney to review the certification of the 2019 municipal election for the town of North Topsail Beach. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, uh, uh, the clerk and I discussed this, um, and I believe she's going to, to announce the election results. Okay. As you know, um, the election was held last fall. Uh, we cannot have an organizational meeting until those election results are certified. Uh, they have been certified, I believe it was sometime in March, maybe early April, I don't remember the date that we received it. Um, we have the certification and Madam Clerk's going to read the results for the mayoral seat and one of the Altman seats. For mayor? North Hopkins Beach, the November 5th election. The results Joanne McDermott. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little feed. Uh, Joanne McDermott, ballot count 126, 58.6% of the vote. Mr. Dan Tuman, ballot count 80, 37.21% of the vote. Write in miscellaneous, ballot count 9%, 4.19%. For the opening of Alderman, Joanne McDermott, ballot count 141, that's 37.2%. Jerry Hyde, ballot count 114, that's 30.08%. Robert Swantek, ballot count 64, 16.89%. Rebecca A. Dixon, ballot count 55%, 14.51. Write in miscellaneous, ballot count 5%, 1.32. Pro Tem, Mayor Pro Tem, those uh, results have been certified. Um, that would put us to the next item on the agenda. It appears that you have won two different offices or seats, uh, the, the mayoral seat and the alderman seat. And at this point, uh, I request that you choose which seat you would like to take. Um, the selection for me will be to take the seat of the mayor of North Topsail Beach. Okay. So today we will swear you in as mayor and swear Alderman Hyde in as an alderman. That will leave us with a alderman vacancy that will be filled by a vote of the board. So we can move to the uh, swearing in now. Okay. And while we're transitioning, normally we would also adopt a regular meeting schedule at the organizational meeting. We are, um, with the Zoom and everything, these are not normal times. It's, it's our hope to, to do that, I believe, in the May meeting. Hopefully it will be in a more normal, if you will, uh, setting. But if not, it's our objective to pass a regular meeting schedule uh, at a special meeting in May. I, Joanne McDermott. I, Joanne McDermott. Do solemnly and sincerely swear. Do solemnly and sincerely swear. That I'll support the Constitution. That I'll support the Constitution. And laws of the United States. And laws of the United States. That I'll be faithful and bear true allegiance. That I'll be faithful and bear true allegiance. To the state of North Carolina. To the state of North Carolina. And to the constitutional powers. And to the constitutional powers. And authorities. And authorities. Which are or may be established. Which are or may be established. For the government thereof. For the government there. That I will endeavor to support. That I will endeavor to support. Maintain and defend. 
maintain and defend the constitution and laws of said state. The constitution and laws of said state. Not inconsistent with. Not inconsistent with. The constitution of the United States. The constitution of the United States. To the best of my knowledge and ability. To the best of my knowledge and ability. And that I'll faithfully discharge. And I'll faithfully discharge. The duties of my office. The duties of my office. As mayor. As mayor. For North Topsail Beach. For North Topsail Beach. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Raise your right hand and then my buttons. I, Gerald Jerry Hyde. I, Gerard Jerry Hyde, do solemnly and sincerely swear, do solemnly and sincerely swear, that I will support this. states, that I will be faithful, that I will be faithful, and bear true allegiance, and bear true allegiance, to the state of North Carolina, to the state of North Carolina, and to the constitutional powers, and to the constitutional powers, and authorities, and authorities, which are or may be established, which are or may be established, for the government thereof. For the government thereof that i will endeavor to support that i will endeavor to support maintain and defend maintain and defend the constitution the constitution and laws of said state and laws of said state not inconsistent with not inconsistent with the constitution of the united states the constitution of the united states to the best of my knowledge and ability to the best of my knowledge and ability and that i'll faithfully discharge and that i will faithfully discharge the duties of my office the duties of my office as alderman as alderman for north topsail beach for north topsail beach so help me god so help me god congratulations thank you congratulations thank you thank you Neil. All right, Mayor, we have a new solid board. Congratulations. So the next. That's okay. That's all right. So the next item on the agenda, I did want to talk about because I'm sure that there is um, there's some confusion about how we'll fill the alderman seat. So in my talking with the board of election, Brian, I just wanna make sure the public understands the process that we have to follow. In my conversation with the board of election and with you, I believe it doesn't just fall to the next person from the election, which would have been Mr. Swantek. I believe that the public is able to submit applications for that vacancy that we as a board will appoint that person. Correct. Okay. Under North Carolina law, if there's a vacancy, the next highest vote getter does not get the office. Some states would, like say that the person that received the most votes for whatever can reason. Can you unmute? You're still muted. I'll right. mute mine. So I just want to make sure everybody can hear you no, so I'm, they understand. I'm, I'm unmuted. Okay. All right. No. Okay, I'll start over. You're unmuted. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, North, North Carolina, 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 under North, North Carolina, Carolina election law, law if the top vote get it, the person that's, that's eligible to, to take the office, for some reason, reason doesn't serve or, or moves or passes away, gets incapacitated, the next highest vote getter does not get that office. Some states do have laws like that. North Carolina does not. We have, as you indicated, we confirmed that with the Board of Elections. Uh, so now we would default to uh, our charter and the general statutes. And, and under our charter, the board fills the vacancy by a vote. Uh, the board can, uh, as you indicated, accept applications. The board can make nominations. Uh, there's a, a myriad of options as to what names go into that potential appointee, but the board appoints uh, the person to fill that vacancy. Well, as we go through that, um, from a legal standpoint, the board vacancy was not created until the swearing in. Correct. So we what now, we've done in the past 
And what I would recommend we do again is to advertise the vacancy and set a cutoff to deadline for applicants to submit their applications. The application is historically the same uh, town application for boards and committees for like board of adjustments and uh, planning board, that kind of thing. And, it, and I know that there are some who are already out there who may have even applied, but we need to set a date uh, and advertise it and then set a, a date 30 days or something like that that allows those who are interested uh, who have not applied to do so. And I don't know how if we want to do a motion to do that or if Brian, if the uh, just the discussion about it. If the, you could go either way. Okay. It's obviously more formal if there's a motion, but if there's a consensus of a, a majority of the board. Well, I'll make the motion to direct that, we do that okay. for the purpose of discussion uh, okay. that we that we that we uh, advertise it and we set a what is what's pleasure of the board a 30 day uh, period. To, go ahead. I, I don't know what it means for 30 days. 30 days or a little less so that we could act on it in our next meeting. I would prefer that we do that too because we're down the number. So if, if it's the 24th now, though, we're going to have our next meeting on what date in, in May? First, 7th, I believe. Double check. May 7th. So we're, we're 13 days. Is that enough time? Well, because, because historically, what we've also done, uh, I've been through three of these, we've, we can hold a special meeting uh, if necessary. To, to address just this item uh, for this, this event. I personally believe that it's enough time to be able to make a decision in May because this is really not new. I know okay. a lot of our citizens have known that this is going to happen and it's been on the November, as we talked about. So, I mean, I would prefer that we cut it ahead of cut off day at the end of the month, maybe the last day of the month. That gives us time to review the applications. I think if people are interested, they've already been thinking about it. Okay. That's, I mean, that's my thing. I just want to make sure that from a public appearance, it doesn't look like we're trying to run this thing through it, you know, because it's only six days. But, but, but this has all been going on for some time. I understand that. Um, but it's still only six days. And if, if the board's comfortable with that, I, obviously, I, I'll be agreeable as well. But you just want to bring up the fact that it is only six days. I understand. Okay. Everybody's home with nothing to do. It's, so if they have any interest, they should be able to Thursday. find time. Yeah, it's next Thursday. Mm -hmm. So I will just mention again that the um, application for town committees is available online. Uh, people have known that, like uh, Mayor said, that there was going to be a vacancy probably. So people have already been thinking about this. So the application is on the town website. Just note that you are applying for the Board of Alderman Vacancy. You can be um, ready to fill out the application submitted again, you know, uh, right away. So there's nothing. Technically, there's no paperwork that has to change hands. It all can be done electronically. Can we put the link to that? The, the application, application on the website, website. or on Facebook as the announcement. Okay, so do we need to? We have a motion in a second. Yeah. So do we need to call Laura and get everybody's vote? Yeah. Alderman Hyde. Aye. Alderman Leonard. Aye. Mayor Potem. Aye. Alderman Benson. Aye. Alderman Peters. Aye. Point of order. She doesn't vote anymore. She's no longer the mayor pro tem. I apologize. You are correct. Okay. I call the rule again. It, it, got, it got past me, too. So we don't normally meet at 9 30 in the morning. That's my excuse. And I'm sorry, I didn't hear Alderman Peters. He said I. He said I. Okay. Yes. Okay, and I am already going to give Laura a hard time and a heart attack because I went out of 
out of order on the agenda. I just felt that it made sense to kind of talk about that open alderman seat while we were going going through the um, oaths. So the next item on here I'm going to get back up to would be the election of Mayor Pro Tem. Do any board members have recommendations that they'd like to make? Uh, yes, I would like to recommend Tom Leonard as Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, I think Tom's got, Tom's got a lot of experience. Uh, he's, as he just said earlier, he's gone through a lot of these, a lot of these things. He's uh, getting to be the historian. Um, I, I think it's uh, a good, a good match with with the mayor. Uh, a little bit of uh, um, different, different points of view, but counterbalance, checks and counterbalances. Uh, and I think that's a good idea. So. I would recommend Alderman Leonard. Um, so do we, as a point point of order, do we allow the board to vote on that recommendation first and then ask if there's any other re recommendations or do I ask for the other recommendations if there are any now? I would also say either one. Okay. Okay. We collect the nominees now. Okay. I think you get all the nominees first. That's how we've done it before. So does anybody the other appointments go? Yeah. Yeah, you, know, you get all the applications and they're just filling the packet. So you know who the Okay. Are there any other recommendations for Mayor Pro Tem? When I spoke with Mr. Peters the other day, I don't know if he have one or not, and I can't, he's on mute, so I don't know. Do we want to, well, he still needs to come off mute so we can vote. Deb, unmute him. She said she can't. Can we? Can we try and call him because he still needs to vote? So we still need to be able to hear him. I've just said to call him. Yeah. While we're doing that, there's no objections to that. We've suspended our rules of procedure on remote attendance. There's no objections to no. Uh, Alderman Peters voting via phone. No, because we had suspended that during this time. It's yes, please. It's Joanne. We can't hear him, so we've put him on uh, speakerphone. Okay. Can we just have her unmute? She can't. Say she can't. Oh, okay. Okay, guys. Hey, Mr. Peters, can you hear me okay? Can you hear that? Yes, I can hear it. So, um, Mr. Peters, we are, I don't know if you heard us, we we're talking about the appointment of Mayor Pro Tem. So, um, uh, Mr. Hyde has nominated Mr. Leonard. I wanted to know if you have any other nominations. And then what I wanted to do was be able to complete a vote. Certainly, Joanne, I would like to nominate Mike Benson as mayor pro tem. And uh, uh, go from there. OK. So then well, let's do a vote then, Clark. Can you let's start with Mr. Leonard, please? Leonard. Vote for Alderman Leonard. Alderman Vincent. I vote for Alderman Vincent. <laughs> uh, Alderman Hyde. I'll vote for Alderman Leonard. <laughs> Alderman oh. Peters, can you hear me? Mr. Peters, um, would you like to vote for Mr. Leonard or Mr. Benson? Mr. Benson. 
break your first tie? I do get to break my first tie. And my vote would be for Mr. Benson. Okay, sounds great. Okay, I'm gonna put you back on mute, but can you hear us better on the phone, Mr. Peters? I can hear you better on the phone indeed, Joanne. Okay, then I'm gonna leave the phone on speaker so you can hear us and I'll unmute when we need to call for a vote. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you sir. so much. Okay. We have next. So the next item would be the board appointments. Um can we move this over so it's causing feedback? So the first one would be on Wasa. Hold on, I'm sorry guys, we're trying to figure out the phone. And I would, is that better? A little bit. So for Anwasa, it's, it's been customary that the mayor accept the appointment to that board to represent North Topsail Beach and I'm happy to do so. Um, for the Eastern Carolina Council, we've requested some, some additional information from them, I actually was appointed to that um, my last term, and there really was no engagement or activity there. So I had requested some additional information on what that, that role is and what's expected and what we can look for our um, performance measures to be there. So that I believe we should wait until the next meeting to fill unless somebody wants to just take a spot and you don't know what you have to do. And then the TISPC, I'm going to turn that over to, we have several members on that now. So I'm going to turn that over, over for, for discussion, discussion to, to pretty, pretty much everybody here, here is on, on the TISPC. TISPC. So, so Mike, Mike, do you, you want, want to talk, talk a little bit about what we need to do there? there? Okay, thank you, uh, Mayor. We are, um, normally we reappoint or appoint members to the represent the topsail, represent the town on the Topsail Island Shrine Protection Commission. Currently, the members are um, Susan Meyer as the citizen representative. I've spoken with her. She would like to continue on the uh, committee. Um, I've also spoken to the other two members are myself I'm actually vice chair of the commission and Alderman Peters. And um, Alderman Peters indicated that he would prefer to relinquish his seat on the commission uh, on a full-time basis, but remain associated with the group as an alternate. So we would um, need in that case to replace uh, Alterman uh, Peters and uh, conversations I've had with uh, Alderman Leonard. He is willing to replace Alderman Peters. The other thing about Alderman Leonard is he's also on the board of directors of the NC Byways group. So this is a good liaison between the commission and the NC Byways, which is a statewide organization for uh, coastal um, issues. So my recommendation would be that Alderman Leonard would replace Alderman, Alderman Peters. Alderman Peters would be the alternate. And uh, Susan, Susan Meyer will continue Meyer. as the citizen representative. And I'm fine with that. Okay. okay. So, but the next thing we need to do is we also should have a alternate. Okay, we've got an alternate for the two alternate. That's going to be Alderman Peters. We should also have an alternate for the citizen representative. They can't be there because we couldn't have three alternate going to the same meeting with the uh, um, state law. So, at this point, I don't know of anyone 
who has volunteered for uh, the Shoreline Protection Commission. So I think we should put the call out for uh, volunteers. Did it, from the I believe we did have a volunteer last year um, from St. Regis. I'll have to I'll have to look, but I thought we had a volunteer from the same region. Yeah, right, we, mm -hmm. we did. It was. I remember it was now. So maybe we can reach out with them because my concern is, and and this might not be a valid concern because you all attend these meetings, but from a citizen perspective, they're not quite as engaged with the TISPC unless they're already going to the meetings just to listen, as the board is that's going. So from an alternate perspective, you want to make sure it's somebody who has time to still stay just as informed as the citizen member so they could actually step in and, and know what's happening. Okay. So we can um, put it out, um, but I think we should actually look and, and also reach out to the person that had expressed some interest last year too. Okay, let's see if they're still interested. Okay, who was it? I it was, say uh, it was Mr. Bear. Yeah. Was it Mr. Bear? Uh, Richard, Richard Grant. Oh, was it Richard Grant? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So with that, so uh, having heard that discussion, if he is willing to serve as an alternate for the citizens of the nation, would the board be in the I think we need to first do our other candidates as the alternate. I'd be fine with it, except that I think that we need to we need to talk to him before we vote on that aspect of of this issue. And I think we could probably go ahead and vote on everything else that we've discussed with okay. moving moving me, you know, renewing you, renewing me, and moving me to to a primary, renewing Susan, and then the uh, the citizen alternate we can. We can discuss uh, next meeting separately. All right. Okay. So we actually want to have a motion on this and yes. a vote. So the motion would be, as Alderman Leonard stated, that he will replace uh, Alderman Peters on the commission. Alderman Peters will move to the uh, alternate spot for the two Alderman on the commission and that Susan Meyer will continue as a citizen representative to the committee. I'll second that. Any discussion? Or can you call for a vote? Are you calling back? If you don't mind. And just as we're waiting for them, it was um, Mr. Bear, it was Lawrence Bear who actually was interested in uh, the citizen role for All right. Are you still hearing the meeting on the computer? Can you still hear us? We're getting ready to. Can you hear us on the computer? <laughs> All right. All right, we're going to we're going to cast a vote for the Strong Protection Commission and we discuss. Okay, I'll put you on speaker so that you can cast your vote. On the floor. Okay. okay. All right. Aye. Alderman Leonard? Aye. Alderman Benson? Aye. Alderman Peters? Aye. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. So the next item on the agenda, or actually on the TISPC, Mike, so will you 
Can I just ask for some clarification on how the follow-up will be handled for the citizen represent um, representation alternate? Will you follow up with those folks, folks, Mike, to see if they have interest in it and bring it back to the board the next Certainly. meeting? Okay, perfect. Thank you. Now, on the um, state of emergency, this is probably why all 73 attendees are on here today. And I actually do have some questions, Brian. I'm hopeful that you'll be able to answer for me. I know the governor has extended his stay at home order until May 8th. I believe that we all had um, some questions as far as his phases of reopening North Carolina. So, so as of right now, it's ex my un understanding is ex extended until May 8th to stay at home. And that prior to that May 8th date, he will be releasing information regarding what that means for the three phases, whether stay at home will extend past May 8th, will it end May 8th? When, you know, what exactly will be allowed in phase one, two, and three? I think he's released some high level guidelines and, um, and his plan, but I don't think we have the details necessarily around one, two, and three. His office is working out the details of those phase that phase plan. He extended the existing order to May 8th to give them more time to, to develop those details. I think the, the plan will be very similar to the White House uh, mm -hmm. plan, uh, in large part indexed to our ability to test and trace. Um, mm -hmm goal is to reopen, but also have the ability to isolate outbreaks before they mushroom. Mm -hmm. um, and the issue, as we all know, is the availability of tests mm -hmm. and uh, how long it takes to return them if you marry that up uh, to a possible seven day asymptomatic period before you start showing symptoms and then it takes another up to a week to get a test back, that person, you know, you're looking at two weeks of someone who may be infecting everyone they come in. Hmm. But um, they're making progress to get more tests to us to be able to trace outbreaks. I do not think on May 8th, uh, there will be no restrictions from the governor's office. I think those restrictions are going to be incrementally mm -hmm. loosened. I think they are probably struggling with how to reopen restaurants and bars and maintain the uh, social distancing and protect both the public as well as the servers that work there. Uh, we don't have any definitive details at this time. But I, I have been told that we, we, it will be very similar to the White House plan. Okay. So the one thing that I wanted to acknowledge to everybody that's listening and everybody that will watch the video is we as a board have received a lot of feedback from both full-time residents as well as owners who are part-time residents and may rent their homes out um, when they're not here. We appreciate everybody's feedback that has come in. We take it very seriously. We, we are reading all of them that come in and we as a board are doing the very best job that we can to maintain um, public safety and also consider the impact that it's having financially on owners who expect the vacation rental to be coming in. So the one thing that I really wish can happen out of all of this is the divide between full-time residents and part-time residents, that's the one thing that needs to stop because we as a board are not acting that way. We're worried about North Topsail Beach. We're worried about the full-time residents. We're worried about those who may lose their homes if they can't receive any rental income this year. We're worried about the impact on our budget. We're worried about the impact on how that budget is going to reflect our being able to provide emergency services to everybody that's here in North Topsail Beach. So the one thing I am going to ask is if we could please, as a community, stop the divide between residents and part-time owners, because 
we're not making decisions that way. Um, so I did want to just get that message out. The other message I would like to get out is in all of my conversations with folks who are renting their homes personally, not through property management firms, please take this time to put a plan in place to determine how you are going to keep and maintain the public safety guidelines in your rental properties. So the CDC has recommendations out there. You can find them on your websites, but I don't think the magic date, just because we're open on a magic date, doesn't mean you are ready. So I'm asking everybody to take that time and make sure that they're prepared, their cleaning crews, their vendors, know what they have to do to make sure the hard surfaces are wiped down. What are they doing with their linens? What are they doing with their quilts? There's a lot that has to be considered when you say that you have a guest coming to your home. And I'm just please asking you to investigate that and make sure that you all are ready as well. And if you're using a property management firm and they have not communicated with you, please ask them. I want you to feel confident that your guests are gonna be safe in your house. We don't wanna put our emergency responders at risk because somebody's not prepared. Okay, I'm done my speech. So I don't know if anybody wants to add anything to that if I didn't cover. Well, I'd like to say something. Um, myself here. You know, we've talked a lot about it amongst ourselves. Um, we responded, you know, in terms of reviewing the emails that we've received from homeowners. And the thing that, that I want to make sure everyone understands is that those of us that are up here making decisions, trying to do what's best for the whole town. Um, it's not about like Joanne said, it's not about full-timers versus part-timers, homeowners that rent houses out, homeowners that don't. It's about, you know, our job and what we've been elected and chartered to do and took an oath to do was to, to do what's best for the whole town. Uh, and this is not unlike a hurricane and in that it's, it's a challenge. In fact, it's probably more of a challenge than a hurricane in a lot of ways, because there's so many unknowns and there's just so much that we've never gone through before that we're going through this time. So for those that are out there, you know, listening, please bear with us. Um, this is tough on everybody. Anybody else? Okay. We, uh, we do need to decide what we're going to do about the rental. Rental van right well, now. I, it, it it right now it ends on the thirtieth of the month. Okay. Yes. This. Okay. Are we leaving it there, or are we? What are we doing with it? I think we we have a bunch of people tuned in wanting to know what the heck the board's going to do. Well, and the one thing I would like to say on that is I know that there's several owners who want us to be silent and not say anything because they feel it gives them more negotiation power with their tenants as far as asking them to reschedule versus cancel. In my mind, you have the ability to coordinate that conversation with your tenant no matter what, if they are comfortable coming and they would rather come in July or August, please do so and accommodate them. But if the governor's order has said everybody is to stay at home, I don't see how we can allow vacation rentals to come during his stay home order. So what you're saying without saying it is that we need to extend the vacation rental ban to match the currently imposed New date as of yesterday of May the 8th. That's my recommendation to the board. That is that would be legal, uh, legal recommendation as well. Yeah, I think that is a it's a very good point. I think we should stay in step with what the governor is advising for the state. And I agree that we should extend the short-term rental ban until May the 8th. Okay. I agree. And, All right. and I don't want to overstep my bounds here, Mayor and, and Board, but we all know that there's that's not magic. Uh, the, the governor could change his order 
or even if the governor doesn't, conditions may dictate that be extended or lifted earlier. I mean, I don't think I don't see how we can lift it earlier due to the the governor's order, but just for proper planning, so you guys don't get inundated with with calls and all that. I think we, if we're all honest with ourselves, uh, this is a dynamic situation, and we're assessing it literally on a daily and hourly basis. Um, I just don't want to give the public perception that May 8th is some sort of magic day. Uh, uh, hopefully, it will be the end of them, and we can resume vacation rentals safely. But uh, just the responsible thing to do is remind everyone that May 8th may be extended. Well, if I could say something else, too. First of all, I agree with you. Second, you know, this this subject, this topic is the elephant in the room. That's why we have 71 attendees yes, sir. on our on our Zoom conference here. You know, so let's just be honest. That's what everybody's tuned in to, to hear about. Um, mirroring the governor's dates, I think, is our most reasonable course of action going forward. You know, there are other towns close to us, specifically on this barrier island, that have chosen another date arbitrarily that doesn't match up with the governor's guidance. And what we're just trying to do at this point, you know, we're not punning, we're not punning the decision to the governor's office, but we are trying to, uh, you know, accommodate and support his policy and, and just trying to make sure that the two timelines synchronize uh, as much as possible. And then, did I, I just, say that well, Brian, you're you smiling. Did, well, well, tongue in cheek, the other town that you're referring to did not make a decision arbitrarily. There was a reason why they picked that day. Okay. Um, All right, well, uh, I'll take I, that back. I, I agree. Your point, I think, was that that town uh, picked a date beyond the governor's order. Mm -hmm. And we thus far have coincided with the governor's order, so I couldn't resist. Okay. <laughs> but I also think it's important for those to understand who are listening that we have the ability to be more restrictive than the governor's orders, but not less. Correct. So we do not legally have the ability to just say we're open on Saturday Correct. if he has a stay at home order in place. Right. And I, I don't believe everybody knows that, but. Well, I don't think vacation rentals would would qualify as essential travel. Right. No. Okay. And we're still gonna have a challenge when the vacation rental ban is lifted and we're able to have vacation rentals here on the island because if people are in a stay at home state, owners are gonna have that challenge as far as working that out with their guests as well. This whole entire summer, I would imagine. Or at least a good portion of it. Well, I just, you know, to follow up, you know, we're trying to do what's best for the town, all of its citizens, all of its property owners. We're all in this together. And, and it's a tough time right now. It's, it's, it's a hard, it's a hard position to be in to make decisions when you don't have all the facts that you need to have to make those decisions because those facts simply are not available. And I, I don't, you know, what I don't know if for those of you that are also listening from a board perspective can see some of the comments coming in that are asking us to open the town and, and go against the governor's orders. And I hope that you understand that I just explained to you why we legally cannot do that. Um, so hopefully that will provide some clarification from you. It's not just up to us when vacation rentals open, because as the town attorney said, it is it's not essential travel to come to Topsail. Um, so when you look at our state of emergency, just to provide some clarification for you, um, Clark, number one is the, the under section five, number one, we're just gonna want to extend that end date to match the governor's order. Um, I don't believe we have any changes unless any of the board members disagree. Number two, um, Town operations is still going to be the same, and we do request folks stay home. And we're also going to extend keeping our public parking closed as well through May 8th. Um, 
Okay. Any other conversation on that? Okay. And then uh, we do have open forums. So we we're going to talk more about. I'm, I'm sorry. Yes. yes. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Uh, I thought we should talk a bit more about parking as a board. We had planned on having a um, retreat back in February, but the uh, circumstances of the UK, we were not able to do that. Uh, the main thing I want to bring before the board's attention is that we were on a path at one point to uh, institute a parking uh, town-wide uh, this year to help replace revenues. And now even more importantly than uh, ever because of loss of uh, potential <clears throat> income through our so sales tax, through our uh, occupancy taxes that we'll be collecting this year. So <clears throat> I just want staff to be prepared. I would like to have a presentation at the next, uh, our next board meeting of the plan that is being developed for paid parking so that we can figure out how we're going to handle this. It's gonna be a major effort and it's gonna take time to implement. And it's possible that we can coordinate instituting paid parking at a point in the future to coordinate with the opening, reopening of public parking in, in town. But I think for the time being, and I'll go out and limb and say this is my personal opinion, but I think as far as public parking goes in the town, it's probably going to be, you know, the phase two or phase three part of the governor's plan, because that is the most uh, obvious situation where we would have uh, difficulty maintaining social distances when we have several hundred cars parking in our town parking lot. So we do need to uh, be cognizant of that and we need to be thinking about how we're going to institute paid parking uh, as we had talked earlier this year. So those are my comments about parking. I have a question for the manager. Uh, it's, it's next Thursday. Does that give you enough time? Well, I think the paid parking plan is already pretty much in place and ready okay. to go. So we should be able to meet that without any problem. Okay. Just making sure. I do. I do. I'm sorry. Next Thursday is the 30th. So the work meeting will be May 7th. Okay. Just so we're on the same page. Sorry. All right. Okay. Well, the other thing I wanted to bring to town staff. So attention um, dealing tangentially with parking. And that is the, uh, the vendor who we are contracted with to service the uh, public toilets at the parking areas and throughout town really. They've not been able to service those because the parking lots are closed off. I think we should be looking to negotiate a um, adjustment in our contracts that we're not paying for services they're not providing. So I'd like town staff looking at that. I, I, that to me is, I don't understand why they wouldn't have already coordinated that with town staff if they need to enter the parking lot on so we can let them in. But there's no reason for them to service the public toilets if no one is using them. Right. If That's people like, can walk to the beach accesses, they, they can, can still go, go to the beach and they can still use those. Well, I, I'm really talking about the Jeffrey Lots. There's a lot of people that walk up and down there that may be using yeah. it. I'm just saying, I think that that is something that we can definitely ask town staff to follow up on. Um, and it, it can definitely be worked out. But just because a public parking lot is closed, doesn't mean people aren't walking there and using that access for the beach is all I'm saying. Yeah, but at the same time, back to Mike's point, the volume of, of traffic there has really, really gone down. And especially at the Jeffries lot and even the lot down there uh, about halfway down the, the Jenkins Way lot. I mean, 
they're barricaded off. You may get some foot traffic, but it's not going to be like it would be on, you know, during normal times. Right. Those on school this time of year, and a public works director back there is shaking set up and down and green and stuff. Like that. Yeah. I think we're on the right path. To yeah. At least, at least discuss with them some level of, you know, missing out or, or something like that. If they've even built us, we don't. I mean, do you know if they built us? Yes, they did. We were ahead so of April. Okay. Ahead of time. Well, okay. Then yes, let's definitely talk yeah, about them. Paid the April bill. The other thing I want to mention about public toilets is that's really a concern with the COVID virus situation because how can we uh, be sure that it is really be a high risk for a person to use the public toilet at this point with the virus? Because you couldn't. And, and every, that, that they're safe to use. every emergency management phone call I've been involved in in three different counties, to, uh, all public health, including the hospital uh, consultants at New Hanover Regional recommend closing public bathrooms. It's a confined space. Uh, we don't know how frequently they are cleaned or used. And uh, there is scientific evidence that the COVID-19 virus can live on a uh, stainless steel or hard surface for up to 72 hours. So, so should we be roping them off and not having them? I, I would recommend it. I mean, you know, a lot of this is your own common sense. I don't can't see me using one for the reasons I just stated. However, everyone doesn't take it as serious as others. And it doesn't matter if they're willing to take the risk. Uh, and you know, the person coming in after them is the one that's also taking that risk unknowingly. So I, I, I would, unless we're going to have a, a pretty stringent cleaning protocol, I would recommend we close the, the, the bathrooms. Well, I see it from two different directions. I'm not unmuted here. Um, the one side is, is that, you know, maybe, maybe we should have had, we known how long this was going to go on. The thing would have been to have, have the contractor come collect them up and take them away until it was over. We didn't know how long it was going to go on. Again, that, that business of making decisions with, without all the facts. The other side of me thinks, you know, at what point in time does common sense, individual common sense prevail? And at what point in time, you know, where, where are we in this equation as, as, as a government in terms of, you know, mitigating individual risk. You know, if 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 you gotta go, and it's there, and you know the risk involved, but you gotta go worse than, you know, the risk. You know, I think we leave them open and let people make decisions based upon their own, for lack of a better word, personal need. Right. Okay. It's a tough call. I'm just letting you know that um, in some of these other. Uh, conference calls, there are medical professionals, infectious disease specialists, and they are pretty much unanimous on that point. Mm -hmm. um, none of these decisions are easy, and every decision we make, uh, there's going to be a group that say that says it's uh, too strict, and then there'll be a group that says it's not strict enough pretty much on every one of these tough decisions. So, uh, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm also on the thought process that um, people do have to be responsible and start being responsible for themselves and their safety and the safety of others. So if we're thinking the volume is being very low where we've got these out at, I don't know that it's, it's worth the expense of trying to have them all removed and then being put back when, I mean, it's just one more thing we've got to coordinate if we want to put a sign up that says use at your own risk or we want to tape them, that might be way to go again I, I was just trying to give you the benefit of what some of the healthcare specialists have, have been well, saying. and i would agree brian if we had actual bathroom like you know actual structures like the concession stands have bathroom right. things and we have those closed these are porta bodies right. so i mean maybe we have signs that just go up there that just say use at your own risk right. i think using a porta john at your own risk in today's environment is a given. 
you can't turn the television on without being blasted with stay at home messages from every network. And I, I don't know if we need to tell people that it's at your own risk. I really don't. At what point in time, you know, what point in time do we begin babysitting? It's just a thought. So do we actually need to vote on this or is this something that we could please direct town staff to just think through and work through and we'll go with what their recommendations are? Are we back to contract negotiations as to the level of servicing the bathrooms, or are we talking about whether you're going to? I think we need both. I think okay. them. To, I think we need them to take a look at what invoices we're getting if we're not if they're not able to perform those services and ask for some discount or credit sure. until this virus is is over. And then I think we also need them to just put a plan in place that they think is the right thing to do as far as whether we need a sign or don't need a sign okay. because the parking lot's already closed off. We, we don't need a formal motion for that. If that's the consensus of the board, then st staff will, will do that. Okay. Um, and I did just get a question, and I'm going to ask this since... Let me take myself off mute. All right. Um, the question I had received was that the stay-at-home order... It, is also extended into phase one. So right now the state home order goes to phase one, then I mean it goes to May 8th and then phase one starts. And Jerry, to your point, someone else just said to me, the governor mentioned that phase one includes an extension of the stay at home order and that is should be in place until 522. I don't believe as a board we're extending the stay at home order to 522 because until, in my opinion, until the governor actually comes out with more details about phase one, two, and three between now and May 8th, that may still change. And I believe that we need to see the guidance that comes our way between now and May 8th. So I would like to open that up for discussion and see if you all are in agreement with that or if anybody has a different thought. I'm, I'm in agreement with that. Uh, I, uh, as I think Attorney Eads was alluding to, uh, that does leave the potential for this to be extended should the governor announce we're in phase one and phase one still contains a stay at home order that we may have to extend to match his phase one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then, Deb, I believe our next item is open forum. And I believe the plan is that Deb is going to try and play some of the questions that came in for us. Could we have a different restriction for one, two, three bedroom condos, which would be a maximum of one to eight people uh, and the large houses that sleep over 10? Thank you. Laura, can you tell if she's able to do that? I'm at 1835 okay. New River Inlet Road. I have a question for the meeting. Um, All right, thanks attendees. We are working on the open forum questions that came in. The definition of the group could we have a different restriction for one, two, three bedroom? This is Hannah McLeod, 1835 New River Inlet Road. I have a question for the meeting. Uh, depending on the state and county decisions on the definition of group, could we have a different restriction for one, two, three bedroom condos, which would be a maximum of one to eight people uh, and the large houses that sleep over 10? Thank you. This is Hannah McLeod, 1835. All right. Uh, if you can, oh, hold on. Let me try that again. Sorry about that. This is Hannah McLeod, 1835 New River Inlet Road. You hear that? I have a question for the meeting. 
Um, depending on the state and county decisions on the definition of group, could we have a different restriction for one, two, three bedroom condos, which would be a maximum of one to eight people, uh, and the large houses that sleep over 10? Thank you. This is Hannah McLeod, 1835 New River Inlet Road. I have a question for the meeting. Uh, depending on the state and county decisions on the definition of group, Uh, hello, my name is Vince Giordano. I own a house at 4256 Island Drive in North Topsail Beach, and I'm also the president of the Ocean Ridge Village Homeowners Association. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the North Topsail Beach Mayor and Board of Aldermen for providing this opportunity to offer some input and commentary regarding the status of the temporary rental ban uh, in effect in North Topsail Beach. I appreciate the difficulty and complexity of the decisions that the town leaders must make to try to balance the health and safety of the town's residents with their financial and economic welfare. I do not envy your role in these most difficult and challenging times. I communicate with you to simply urge you not to extend the current temporary rental ban without full and deliberate consideration of the consequences your decisions will have on all North, Top North Topsail Beach homeowners. To be clear, I do not seek to substitute my judgment for yours regarding this matter. I only ask that you act judiciously and prudently with the general welfare and interests of all North Topsail Beach residents in mind. I am confident that you will make only decisions that, you're, that you firmly believe fairly balance all of the competing health safety and economic considerations. Thank you, thank you for your time and consideration regarding this matter and, uh, and accepting this input. I am, remain confident that all of our interests remain your interests and that um, decisions will be made in everyone's best interest. So thank you very much, best wishes and Godspeed. Again, this is Vince Giordano, 4256 Island Drive, president of the Ocean Ridge Village Homeowners Association. Thank you. Good morning. It's Phil Fowler. I live at 3745 Island Drive. A couple of three, uh, three topics today. Uh, one, kudos to uh, our public works folks uh, and their efforts in keeping our city looking uh, good, especially the uh, debris pickup uh, they've been accomplishing here the last few days. Um, the, the staff in general uh, who has really shouldered the load as we've gone through this transition on the uh, town manager, uh, that transition sucked away all the energies and efforts to go to that. Uh, the day-to-day -day running of the city was done by those staff leads, and, and I appreciate that. Uh, and, and lastly, for for what I, my words, and one of our unsung heroes, our town clerk, uh, Ms. Laura Oxley, she uh, she she applies the grease uh, to the to the wheels uh, as needed and ensures that things uh, run smooth. She does a whole lot of that behind the scenes and uh, unseen, uh, but just want to recognize her for that. Uh, lastly, our uh, congratulations to our newly elected officials. We've, uh, we've a lot, uh, lot ahead of us. I look forward to uh, having them uh, lead us through, uh, through some of the projects that uh, they've outlined uh, in previous meetings. Thank you, I appreciate your time. Hello, this is Michael Yon, 207 Tamarick's Court. I'm leaving a message for the Board of Alderman Special Meeting on April 24th. I'm a citizen and voter. I would uh, request that the board extend their ban on short-term rentals and their ban on uh, parking at beach accesses until at least the 1st of June of this year. We need to prevent visitors from this town or to this town coming from high coronavirus outbreak areas, including many other states and counties like Wake County, Durham County, Mecklenburg County, 
We do not need visitors coming here and playing Russian roulette with our lives. I beg the board to extend these limitations to at least the 1st of June. Thank you very much. Okay, that's it. Thank you, Deb. I appreciate that. And I appreciate everybody who called in. I'm glad that you were able to make that work for us, Deb. That was very helpful. And thanks again to everybody that um, took the time to provide some comments. Brian, the one other comment that is on here that maybe you could address legally for us is someone had asked how we have the ability to close public parking. Under yeah, I'm, I'm seeing some of these uh, interesting comments myself. Um, North Carolina General Statutes Chapter 166A addresses emergency management. Um, there is a statute that authorizes towns such as North Topsail Beach to enact ordinances that allow us to declare states of emergency, uh, states of emergency and then there is a list of um, allowable prohibitions and restrictions. The movement of people is one, the closing of public areas is one, uh, the closing uh, or regulation of, of businesses, uh, regulation of the sale of alcohol, et cetera, et cetera. But the short answer is the General Assembly's passed a, a chapter of, of, of our general statutes that specifically address the situation. We have followed both that statute and our ordinance to the T. These restrictions were not put into place until we properly declared a state of emergency. If you recall, that was right after former Mayor Tooman retired and this board voted to give you uh, at that time, Mayor Pro Tem, the powers of the mayor and then you implemented the states of emergency so or you've amended the one mr mayor former mayor tuman as i recall uh, it all it's all uh, comes from the general statutes and i appreciate that and i believe that um mr benson had alluded to this earlier the large public parking lots that we have are where we as a board feel that we would have the largest impact for um large groups of people being there because we understand everybody's trying to get out of the house and the beach is definitely a nice place to to escape being stuck inside too so that is the reason for that so that is it guys if we have no closed session then i'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn so moved. all in favor aye, aye. Okay. all right thank you all for joining Leave me. Where did you see that at?